Welcome back to How To with Mr. Noodle. In this video, we're going to install some tile. In this particular case, this tile has an unfinished edge. So we're going to use Sluder aluminum uh, tile edge trim to cover up that edge and make it look much nicer. I'm going to show you how to cut this Schluter channel and bend it to fit your project needs and then we're going to install the tile on the wall. For this project you're going to need several different tools. Now what you use is totally up to you but what I've chosen to use for this project is a Dremel with a cutoff wheel, a file, a tape measure, or torpedo level, a regular size level, some craft paper to cover up my countertop, some tape to hold it there, some mastic, a pencil, a white paint marker, and a couple of different trowels here, but I'll be using the one quarter inch notch on those trowels, and some spacers. These spacers are both one eighth inches in thickness. Of course, you'll also need your tile, and you'll need your Schluter channel. All right, the first step in this project is to determine where the Schluter aluminum tile edge trim is going to be placed. In my case, I want it to come from the edge of my countertop up and over to the bottom of my upper cabinets. First thing you need to do is take your level, get it level on the wall, and draw a line along that from your bottom of your cabinet over to approximate edge of your countertop. Next step, take your level and level it so that your, uh, you can draw your vertical line. Once you draw the line on the wall, you'll want to take your tape measure and measure approximate length of your Schluter channel. So horizontally, it looks like I have about 14 and 13 sixteenths. And vertically, I have 19 and a quarter. You'll want to add those two measurements together before cutting your Schluter. All right, so I've added my two measurements together and I came up with 33 and 7 sixteenths. Now, a tip I'm going to give you is you want to add an eighth of an inch to that because if you come up a little bit short, you can't add material back onto the Schluter. So I'm going to make it a little bit long and I can always trim it off to the length, the exact length I need. So with another eighth, I come up with 33 and 9 sixteenths. All right, now we're going to have to transfer our measurement to the Schluter tile edge trim. And I said it was 33 and 9 sixteenths, so put your tape on there. Come out here to 33 and 9 sixteenths. Take your paint marker, 33 and 9 sixteenths, and make a mark. The reason I'm using a paint marker is because it's such a dark surface. Anything else on there would be really difficult to see. All right, one of the critical pieces of equipment I forgot to tell you you're gonna need is a tile saw. You're gonna need that tile saw in order to cut your tile. In my case, I'm also gonna use it to cut my Schluter aluminum trim. You can get these tile saws from a friend if you know somebody that's got one, or at your local home improvement center if they have a rental department. And then also there are independent rental agencies available as well. If you are gonna do a lot of tiling, it might be worth purchasing your own tile saw. In my case, mine's borrowed. First thing you wanna do is turn on your tile saw. Next, make sure that the water is being pumped and cooling the blade. As you cut your Schluter, you want to make sure that your blade is on the side of the material that you're not going to use because the blade has a thickness of about a sixteenth of an inch and you don't want to reduce your overall material length by a sixteenth of an inch. Slowly proceed forward with the table and cut your Schluter. It's really that simple. All right, back inside, I wanted to tell you that there are a couple of methods you can use for uh, bringing Schluter together at a corner. Some people prefer to miter cut their Schluter. Uh, I prefer to bend the Schluter. To me, uh, if you're not really good at doing miter cuts and bringing two corners together, uh, bending it kind of can make a nice clean look. So I'm going to choose the bending method and that's going to require a little extra steps uh, to, to make that process happen. So earlier we made a measurement of 19 and a quarter on the wall. I want to add my eighth inch here and I come up with 19 and 3 eighths of an inch. I want to measure up 19 and 3 eighths of an inch on my Schluter and make a mark. So let's do that. Okay. 
All right, 19 and 3 eighths. And that's where we're gonna make our bend on our Schluter. Before we make the bend, though, we have to cut out a section of the Schluter in order for that to happen. So to give you an idea of what we're gonna remove, material we're gonna remove, we're gonna take our Dremel tool and we're gonna cut out quite a big section so that when we bend it, they don't bump into one another. All right, anytime you're cutting metal, you wanna wear safety glasses. Metal tends to fly all over the place as you're cutting it. Plug in your Dremel, Turn it on to high and start the cut. I want to point out that you don't want to cut too deep onto the Schluter because if you cut into this edge, this is your finished edge and that will show up in your, in your final uh, product. So stop just short and I'm going to go a little bit closer and be very careful as I get close to this edge here to cut this out. So let's do some more cutting. All right, I need to work at getting that little bit of material out of there because that will get in the way of my bend. Again, don't go past this edge because it will show up in your final project. All right, you'll notice I got quite a bit of material out of there, uh, and that's where our bend's going to take place. All right, another tip is to always check twice before you do any action to make sure your measurements are right. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it up to the wall. I'm going to see that we're kind of lined up here with our mark, and this is where my bend's going to take place so that the top of the Schluter that's up here will bend down and end up being underneath of the cabinet over there. So just take it and gently... Bend it at the point that you made, nice and slow. And you can see how by removing that material, I got it out of the way of where uh, the two points will come together. All right, so that looks pretty close to a 90. And then what we can do is we can stick it up here, line it up to our lines, and take a look at it. Now I'm gonna hold it in place. All right, so I put it up here against the counter, and I want to make sure that this is level, because if it's not, now's the time to make the correction. So I put my torpedo level on there and take a look at it, and you can see that's way off. So what that indicates is I'm going to need to remove some material from the bottom. Remember I said make it a little bit long, because you can always remove material, you just can't put it back on. All right, the next step is to take your file and take off these uh, sharp edges here on the Schluter. Be careful not to slip and scratch uh, the coating on this. It will show up in your final project.
All right, and then finally dry fit it again and see how it lines up. All right, that looks pretty good. Next thing we'll do is we'll apply some uh, mastic and we'll get this started with the tile. You can see that the Schluter is a little bowed out here, so what you can do to fix that to try to make it sit flush is to just take it and kind of bend it a little bit like this, kind of twist it, and that'll help, help it lay down up against the wall. You don't really want that pushing off too much. You want it to be as flush to the wall as possible so that the glue can hold it in place, and that looks pretty good. The next step in this process before we continue on and put mastic on the wall is we want to protect our countertops with some uh, craft paper that I got at the uh, local hardware store and some tape. So that's a really easy process and you'll want to hold it back about a quarter of an inch or so the thickness of your tile. So we'll just quickly tear that off and we can hold it in place uh, initially with uh, a couple of small pieces of tape. Before applying the mastic, we got our paper down and we've got our tiles, our Schluter in place here, ready to go. We've got some spacers ready to go and I'll explain all that. First thing I want to do before putting the mastic on the wall is I want to kind of line up a tile here and get a rough idea of where the mastic is going to go. I don't really want to put too much more on than I need. All right, so we'll do that. And then we'll try to put our mastic within those edges. All right, now let's apply the mastic. Now don't forget, uh, we're only gonna apply the mastic on the wall here where the tile is, but we also want to adhere all of the Schluter, so we're gonna have to put a little bit of mastic around this edge here to hold the Schluter in place. So let's get started. And we'll just bring it right out to your line that you drew on there where the Schluter's gonna go. can be a messy job. Go ahead and apply it a little thick to begin with, right up to your line, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, screed it off with the, uh, uh, with the notches in the trowel. Now, if you're doing a much larger project, there are larger trowels available. I like this small, cheap plastic trowel because uh, it's easy to, to maneuver and, and utilize uh, for this project. Don't worry about getting it down there. You can, if it gets any bit of, of if it gets on your uh, countertop, you can easily wipe it off. All right, so let's go ahead and use the notches now. And you want to take any excess off with the notches. You don't want too much glue in, in there, or mastic.
too much mastic will squeeze up through your tile depending on the type of tile it is and make it uh, kind of messy. So it's best to remove all the excess. All right, now that we have all the excess removed, uh, I'm going to put a couple of 1 8 inch wedges down here to keep it uh, 1 8 inch off of my uh, countertop because that's what I've chosen to do because the gaps in this tile are 1 8 of an inch. So first things first, put the Schluter up there, line it up, squish it into place. Don't worry about any excess up here, we'll remove that later. All right, make sure it's squished down in your glue really good. And this, at this point, what I want to do is I want to put a little bit of mastic um, on my Schluter channel here, where my tile is going to be. All right. All right, now let's uh, take and place a tile on the wall. And one of the things we're going to want to do is we're only going to keep it an eighth of an inch off of the edge of the Schluter, but it just so happens they have a little trim piece in there that kind of keeps it back just at the right distance. The other thing we're going to check for is how level the tile is. We want to make sure that as we go across, we're level. So that looks perfect. It just so happens that my countertop's level, so it's a good gauge to go off of. Once you get the tile on there, you want to gently seat it. You don't want to push too hard because uh, you can get too much uh, mastic squeeze out and it makes a mess all over your tile. So what I like to do is rub my hand across it, make sure there's no tiles that are a little high in any given spot. You will get a little bit of a rise right here where it comes up onto the Schluter, but that's okay. That won't be noticeable. All right. Now what we want to do is put the next tile in place. So uh, we've got to do a couple things. We're going to put a couple of these 1 8 inch wedges down here to make sure that uh, we're 1 8 inch off the uh, countertop. But in this case, between the tiles, we're going to have to use some of these little 1 8 inch uh, wedges here. And then before you put it on there, make sure it's going to look how you want it. You know, you can rotate it around and say, oh, that looks better than a different position. Get it into place. And get it close to where you think 1 8 inch is. Take your little 1 8 inch wedge here and get it in there. And you can gently maneuver the tile as needed. I got it pretty close. All right, and now, again, gently seat them in place. Make sure you don't miss any. Oh, my little wedge fell out there, so let me put that back in. All right, I'm just gonna go around here and make sure it all feels good. You could certainly use a little rubber mallet if you wanted to, but hand pressure is good enough. There's a mesh on the back of these particular tiles and it works really well at adhering. All right, that's it. So now what you gotta do is repeat that process multiple times all the way around and using your tile cutter to cut out around outlets and things of that nature. Um, coming back to the Schluter channel here, if you have a little mastic on there, don't worry about it. Just take your finger, much like you would do with uh, caulking and just wipe it off and you can use a paper towel as well and just do that until you have it all off of there and it's nice and clean. Alright one of the final steps in this process is when you come to an outlet how do you cut the tile around that outlet? You're gonna have to use uh, a tile saw to do that and in my case because these tiles have metal in them I'm also gonna have to use the Dremel tool. First thing you want to do is hold the tile up in the approximate location of where uh, you're gonna have to cut out for the uh, outlet and just kind of do a rough mark. You can see on mine that this, perfect, this is a perfect line for that so I'm gonna just mark that on the back side right there and then on this one we're gonna be right about here so I'm gonna mark that and then for depth on this tile I wanna be right about where this tile is right here where the gap is between these two tiles so I'll lay that down and I'll make a mark here and then I'm just going to take this straight edge and kind of complete this line here. All right. And very good. So now we have this. All has to come out. 
And it looks like in this particular case, uh, I'm not going to be having to cut any metal. It's going to be all tile saw work. So we'll take this outside to the tile saw and we'll cut it. All right, we're outside and I want to kind of point out a couple of things. These cuts here that uh, run vertically, I can use the, the main tile saw for that. And I want to overcut just a little bit in, into here. And then for the horizontal cut, I've outfitted my Dremel Sawmax with a diamond blade, and I'm going to have to plunge cut that. So let's start with the, the big tile cutter first. Okay, actually, there's no real tile to cut here, so all we're cutting is the mesh backing. All right, slide that over. Notice I overran that just a little bit. All right, so that takes care of that cut. We can go ahead and turn this off and switch over to the saw mat. All right, now I want to avoid cutting into my table here, so I'm going to line up. Uh, there's a channel underneath the table here. I want to line up this cut with that channel. I also want to get some water on here. And as I'm cutting with the saw max, I want to make sure I give it some water. We don't want this to get too hot. We don't want the tile to chip. All right, just like before, you'll want to put your tile up here, kind of do a rough outline, and then spread the mastic out to those edges. All right, now that you have your mastic on the wall, it's time to place your tile. All right, get the tile in place, get your spacers in there. Get everything seated. Don't worry about your edges around your outlet here. If they look a little rough, your outlet cover is going to go ahead and cover that. You can see here I kind of cracked this piece of tile. No big deal. Outlet cover will cover that just fine. All right, that completes this part of cutting out around an outlet. Now just repeat this process through your top row, get all your tile in place, and then we'll come back and grout it. All right, now that we have the tile in place on the wall and the mastic is dry, it's time to grout. We're going to need a couple of tools to do that. We're going to need a drill. The drill will spin our paddle mixer here to mix our grout. We're going to need uh, some grout and some additive I'm going to use in order to give the grout uh, more strength. Some, a gum rubber float uh, to put the grout in the tile uh, grooves. A sponge to clean off the excess grout a bucket for some clean water to do that, and a bucket to mix our grout in. All right, now that we have our paddle mixer on our drill, we're gonna start by putting our uh, grout maximizer in the pail. Make sure you're following the manufacturer's uh, suggestions on how to mix this product. Place it in the bucket and then put the grout in there, and then you wanna start the drill really, really slow, because if you don't, you risk that grout powder flying out and getting all over the place. Now in my case I have to mix it three to five minutes and then I have to let it sit. So here we go, let's get started. Alright, now that it's sat for five minutes, per the manufacturer's instructions, we have to mix it for another two minutes. 
All right, now that your grout is mixed, we gotta get it on the tile. So we're just gonna reach in the bucket here, grab some of that grout, and just kinda squish it into the tile like this, into the grout lines. And then you take that squeegee like that, and you, uh, the squeegee effect of the uh, um, float, and you squeeze that out of there, and you get it off the face of the tile as much as possible. We'll come back later, and we'll use the sponge to clean any off the face after it sits for uh, about 15 to 30 minutes. All right, now that your grout has been uh, applied to the tile and it's been sitting there for the recommended length of time, uh, between 15 and 30 minutes, it's time to take a sponge and wipe off the excess grout. Be very careful not to use too damp of a sponge as you will pull the grout out of the uh, tile. Let's get started. Good circular motions will help keep the grout consistent throughout, so just use that and light pressure. And then what you'll want to do is you'll want to rinse the sponge frequently and then also change your water frequently. That'll help keep, minimize the haze that's left behind. And then after uh, you know, a length of time, you can come back and with a, with a clean sponge and clean water and do this all over again just to make sure you've removed all the grout haze. Very good. All right, so after uh, cleaning your tile with a sponge and getting all the heavy grout uh, off of the tiles, after a couple of hours, based on the manufacturer's recommendations, uh, of letting it dry, it'll develop a haze. And it's that haze that you need to remove and your tile job will be done. Let's take a look at the tile over here and you'll see all kinds of haze on the tile. So to remove that, you take a dry cloth and just buff. And that just wipes right off. And that's all there is to it. Finish that for all your tile and you'll be done. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching and you can find links to the various tools I use down below. All right, the final process. Uh... All right, let's start with turning on the tile saw. Whoop. <laughs> all right, one of the final steps in this process is when you come to an outlet like we have over here, how to cut the, t did you even pan over here? Once you've drawn your line on your wall, you want to measure... <laughs> Alright, the first step in this project is to determine where the Schluter channel is going to... Excuse me, stop. What does that do? Alright, now that we have the grout on the wall and the mastic is dry... Excuse me, I fuck... Welcome back! No, never mind, I fucked that up. Thanks for watching, and you can find links to various tool... Light, tool...